All right, guys, in today's video, I want to chat about royalty free music libraries, specifically uh, which libraries are, in my opinion, uh, some of the best to work with for music producers in 2021 and moving into 2022. So let's get into it. So just a quick reminder that the Production Music Academy is now live and uh, there's a growing community of music producers in there. Uh, it's a great place to share your work and to access all sorts of extra content designed to help you level up your production skills and start uh, making some passive income on music libraries, but also just to help you you know, find work as a composer. Um, I'm doing my first live composing stream this Wednesday exclusively for the Academy. Uh, really excited about that. Uh, you'll find that link below in the description. So go check that out. Okay, so royalty-free music libraries. When someone asks me uh, which libraries that I think are the best, and I hear this question a lot, um, the first thought that comes into my mind is like, what do we mean by best? You know, are we talking about uh, easiest to use or uh, easiest to, you know, to get um, your music on or, or apply to, or are we talking about you know, uh, best library for uh, just straight up earning money? And these categories are worth mentioning here uh, with regards to uh, this list of libraries that I think are the best. Now, I know, of course, that you know, not everyone is going to agree uh, with my take here. And the experience of working with various libraries is it's all very subjective, of course. Um, but I think that I think that most of us would agree, um, especially those of you who are writing, uh, you know, sync music actively and uploading it to, um, you know, royalty free libraries. Most of us, I think, would agree that if there was a prize for like easiest library to get set up and start selling your music on, it'd probably go to Pond5. So getting sales on Pond5 is a subject worthy of another video entirely, you know, probably. I'll, maybe I'll do another video on that. Um, and I'll get into that more in a second. But when anyone asks me, uh, you know, where should I start my journey with music licensing and especially music producers who are, uh, you know, just starting to build their their chops, I always recommend Pond5 for the simple reason that it, there's a relatively low threshold for entry. Um, you know, they're not super picky about the music that you submit to them. Uh, you don't have to go through the trouble of watermarking your tracks and the upload process is generally, you know, pretty easy. Uh, that being said, getting sales on Pond5, even views on your profile is notoriously difficult. Why? Well, you know, just to put it simply, uh, you know, low threshold for entry means oversaturation. You know, it's hard to stand out in a crowd and, and this is often, this is often the case for royalty free libraries. You know, there's a lot of volume. Um, so. Anyway, I'm always curious about people's experience with Pond5. I, I get a, a wide variety of responses on the subject. I know that um, many people see regular monthly sales here, and others have you know hundreds of tracks up with no sales to speak of. So uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a mystery, I guess. But I do think you know it's easy to use and get yourself set up on. So that's something. And you know I do remember when I first started selling my tracks on Audio Jungle way back in the day. I would get the occasional rejection, and I'd upload it on Pond5. They'd always take it. Uh, and occasionally I, I would sell that track there. So, you know, there you go. I mean, anyway, hit me up in the comments below and let me know how you feel about Pond5, uh, what your experiences are uh, working with Pond5. I'm always curious to, to hear what you guys' thoughts are on that. So there are two other libraries for me that fall into the same category as Pond5 in terms of ease of use. And the first is VFine Music. So VFine Music is, is based in China and uh, your sales are calculated in Yuan. Uh, which is a bit confusing at first right now. I think one yuan, I don't know if I'm saying that right, yuan, <laughs> uh, is worth, it's worth about 15 cents American. So um, you got to do that cal calculation. But you know, regardless, this library is very easy to work with, uh, similar to Pond5. Uh, the upload process is very, uh, it's very fast. Um, you don't have to watermark your tracks. Uh, but one thing that does set them apart is they currently don't accept alternate edits of your track. Uh, they've been saying that they're working on changing that, I believe, and I don't know if and when that will happen. Um, but I hope that they do make that change, as I know that many of the authors that I've spoken to that report regular sales on Pond5 say that it's almost entirely for um, alternate track edits, um, not for the original full-length track. And that's something, actually, I should have mentioned about Pond5, actually. You don't upload um, your track and all of its edits as a single package. Uh, they get treated as separate tracks. So um, in a way that can you know work in your favor if you're making lots of alternate edits of your tracks. But um, anyways, back to, to VFine. I also hear quite a range of experiences with uh, regards to sales here. I don't know um, if I can speak to whether there's a certain genre that works well here. I've sold um, some hip hop tracks uh, on VFine. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I would recommend looking into VFine uh, and applying to be an author on VFine because uh, they do get traffic and, uh, you know, the upload process is, is, is pretty straightforward. It's pretty painless. 
So the other library I want to talk about is 100 Audio, and I suspect this will be kind of like a controversial take. And the reason for that is as much as I personally find 100 Audio's upload process quite straightforward, um, many people disagree with me on this one because um, they do ask for a few things that no other library asks for, specifically a screenshot of your DAW session, um, the lead instrument stem, and MIDI information from your track. Now, other than that, the upload process is pretty easy, uh, no watermarking necessary, and they accept alternate edits of your track too. So um, the reason they ask for this extra verification uh, is, is I th it, it seems to me that it seems that they're having a lot of trouble with authors abusing the terms of their contracts. And this is, uh, this is apparent in their discussion forums. They've been very open about expressing their concern over uh, illegal copying of other people's work um, and multiple accounts uploading the same tracks. So clearly um, they're trying to do something about that. And I think it's a valid concern on their part. Um, I get the sense that their disposition towards the issue comes across as distrustful or uh, condescending to the authors and and that turns some people off from wanting to work with them but all i can say is my you know my experience so far has been pretty positive um i think you know, the extra few items that they ask for take lit like you know, it takes like 30 seconds to put those together and um i get more sales on 100 audio than than i do on vfine and pond 5 combined so uh, there's clearly traffic here. Uh, you know, my trailer music has done pretty well here, especially some of the darker, like hybrid trailer stuff. Um, they are also based in China. So the contract and sign up process is, is a little tricky to navigate. Um, uh, and I think some things get lost in translation, translation, but, uh, once you, you know, you signed up and you're up and running, it's fairly smooth sailing. You know, um, I know some of you guys will disagree, but, uh, like I said, my experience has been pretty positive. So there you have it. Okay, so moving on, other libraries that are perhaps worth mentioning if we're talking about platforms that are relatively easy to start selling on. So 123RF, Motion Elements, Audio Sparks, Dreams Time, and Deposit Photos, which I think was just acquired by Vistaprint. Um, these are among uh, some other royalty-free libraries that often come up in conversations about libraries that are fairly easy to get set up with. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not convinced that they're providing um, a lot of value for authors on average. And I want to say, you know, make sure that I'm saying on average, right? Because it's like, I do occasionally hear people tell me that they do well on like one, two, three RF or motion elements. Um, but on average, I'm not sure if they're providing a lot of value. Um, and I got to be careful here because I, some of these, I don't really have any experience with personally, but I'm relying on, uh, the conversations that I have with my friends who are working on you know, or working with many more libraries than I am. So I'm taking that into account and, you know, if I'm wrong or if I'm mischaracterizing, um, these libraries anyway, you guys can let me know. Um, if you disagree, please, you know, feel free to, um, uh, throw your thoughts up in the comments. Uh, I know there's a lot of different opinions about these platforms and what's important to note is that I rarely hear from anyone that they're making any kind of meaningful income working with these libraries. Like they're not making a lot of money. Um, so at best, it's usually like, you know, a sale once in a blue moon kind of thing. So anyways, I'm not sure that I would include, or I'm not sure I would rank these libraries high in the list of best libraries in general, but in terms of getting started as a beginner, uh, they're libraries that you could certainly look into, um, and I would manage your expectations going into it. Uh, but you know, they are there, and uh, like I said, they're they're libraries that often come up in conversations. So under normal circumstances, I would also include Audio Jungle in this list, uh, but I can't in good conscience because you know they haven't opened the door back up to new applicants. I mean, I think it's been more than six months now since they said they were going to take a six month break from letting new applicants in maybe not uh, i could be wrong about that but either way you know until they open the doors back up to new authors they're really not uh, relevant to this conversation i guess which is unfortunate so anyways moving on let's shift the focus from best for beginners or best you know for easy to use or whatever to best libraries to uh, start making some money so there's there's really no question in my mind that motion array um has to take the number one spot here. Whatever it is they're doing, it's working. Um, Artless clearly recognized that when they acquired them earlier this year, and I owe a lot to them. And I mean, they, I mean, they pretty much got me through COVID, so I'm grateful for them. Uh, they are, in my opinion, an example of what every subscription library um, or every subscription royalty-free music platform should aspire to be. You know, their their communication is on point. 
they're accountable, they're transparent, um, and you know they're great at curating their music and their content. And most importantly, there's traffic here, and that translates to regular monthly payouts for their authors, which has the potential to be substantial. Um, you know, getting accepted as an author is challenging, as it should be. Um, they're focused on high quality content. You know, I noticed that when Artlist bought them out, um, they drastically raised the bar in terms of the quality standard. And a lot of the older authors who had, you know, been working with them for a while were complaining in the discussion forums about their tracks not getting accepted anymore. And man, you know, that sucks. But that's like, that's how it goes. You got to keep up with the, the times and, and you got to st stay relevant. Uh, and make sure that you know your productions are uh, you know are sound modern. You know this is why music licensing is tough. You know it's it's one of those things. It, it, it's it's one thing to write a good track, but the production value has to be on point too. You know the mix has to pop. You know so I mean yeah, it, but yeah this is why the game is tough because we're writers, we're arrangers, we're mixing and mastering engineers, um, we're wearing all these different hats, and you know there's a lot to pay attention to all at once. So Motion Array is under the Artlist umbrella, of course, and Artlist is, you know, arguably the king of all royalty-free uh, music libraries. They've managed to position themselves at the top of the game, and, um, you know, what really set them apart from everyone else, at least initially, because, you know, now there's actually several other libraries that have kind of adopted their model, um, is an art, is it, it's an artist-focused approach. And I think, you know, their key insight was that they knew that content creators in an ideal perfect world would love to just go to their Spotify and download their favorite tracks to use in their videos. So they essentially said, okay, let's build our own Spotify and get artists from all around the world to open up their, their catalogs for licensing opportunities on our platform and we'll do all the marketing. Uh, you know, it was a really brilliant insight and it worked. And the reason it worked is because, you know, there's thousands upon thousands of music producers and composers out there who are creating really high quality content who aren't famous you know, and who would jump at the chance for any exposure uh, and, of course, you know, um, some income potential. Uh, since joining Artlist, my Spotify monthly listeners uh, jumped from zero to over a thousand, um, you know, which is kind of cool because I've never done any marketing or, or promo for my Spotify whatsoever. Um, and, you know, that's a testament to the reach that Artlist gets. Um, my music is showing up in like random playlists all over the world and i've you know now heard my own tracks multiple times show up in in ad campaigns and that's a really uh, you know surreal experience <laughs> you know when you're like browsing through youtube or instagram uh, and there's an ad for some like random product and your own track is playing in the background um it's that's and, and you know it's it's crazy and interesting um that you know artless gets so much reach um anyways i would say that Artlist is great to work with overall. They've been, you know, um, easy to communicate with. I respect their vision and I'm excited to keep working with them, um, you know, throughout uh, the years to come. So uh, the nice thing about Motion Array and Artlist is that their doors are always, they always seem to be open. Um, they're always keen to be adding new music to the platform. So that's cool. So there are other royalty-free libraries that are also heavy hitters and worth mentioning. Um, Musicbed, this is also a big one. And it's known for exceptionally high quality music. It seems as though they don't have an open application process though. So uh, maybe, you know, they have a team that reaches out to other artists that they're interested in. I, I think this is the case. I know that from previous experience working for um, a, a label that, uh, and one of the acts that we, we signed was approached by Musicbed. So, um, so difficult to join, but uh, definitely on my radar, uh, not working with Musicbed at the moment, but I'll definitely let you know um, if that changes. Other libraries that are also very interesting to me, um, Musicvine, Audio, uh, also Soundstripe, and Marmoset. Um, although I think the latter two both seem to generally have their doors closed to new applicants. Every time I've looked, uh, they're, they're not accepting new applicants. Um, I actually applied to um, Audio and was accepted by them, uh, but I made the classic mistake and, and learn from this if, if you're just starting to send your music out to, uh, to libraries. Don't send um, or try not try to avoid sending music to multiple libraries at the same time um, because the audio and artless both got both got back to me at the at the exact same time and um, I was stoked at first because they were both uh, non-exclusive uh, however artless um, 
registers your your music with their own content ID system, and audio requires that you um, that the tracks that you're giving them aren't registered with any content ID system. So right right away, that was a conflict of interest, and I had to decide um, you know which library I was going to give the music to. So I went with Artlist, explained that to audio, and they never responded. I'm assuming that they weren't very impressed. Um, I would like to work with them. Uh, I'm curious about them, and I, I probably will uh, send them some uh, music in the future. But you know, and hopefully, uh, I didn't burn that bridge. Um, if anyone from audio is uh, watching this this video, probably not. But uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, that was a that was my bad. And you know, that's a classic mistake. Uh, so uh, in the future, if you guys are sending out your music, um, you know, make sure to do one library at a time. And uh, especially, you know, obviously, if if you're pitching to exclusive libraries, that's like um, that's like 101. You know, you don't send out the same music to like a bunch of uh, you know libraries at the same time. <laughs> Anyways, I'm also um, you know curious about premium beat and epidemic sound, um, and th those are interesting to me. I don't think that I'm eligible to work with epidemic sound as the only except U.S. and Swedish authors, I believe. Uh, also, they restrict their authors from having any PRO affiliation, from what I understand, which is a big red flag for me. Um, so unfortunately, I don't think I'll be working with um, Epidemic Sound anytime soon. But uh, Premium Beat, is cur I'm curious about that one. I'll definitely look into it. I'm not sure what the contracts look like. Uh, but if anyone does know, feel free to throw your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I'd be curious. So look, I know there's a ton of uh, royalty-free music libraries out there. And uh, I'm curious, you know, if you thought that there was one that I missed in this video um, that you know, that should have been on this list, uh, hit me up in the comments. Let me know. Uh, it's, I'm always, you know, stoked to hear from you guys uh, and hear what your thoughts are on this. But I think those are the ones that were worth mentioning uh, for today. And and like I said at the, you know, at the beginning of the video, I mean, I think if you're new to this, I think Pond5, uh, VFine, and 100 Audio are like good libraries to start. Um, you know, and just kind of like get your feet wet, test the waters, see if you can make any sales. Um, I think that there's potential to earn a little bit of money there. And look, you know, go take a listen to some of the tracks that are on Artlist and Motion Array. And if you think that your tracks belong on those libraries, then apply. I mean, like I said, the, the, their doors are always open. Like, and I love that. I love the fact that, you know, they're always willing to uh, listen to uh, new applicants. They seem to have like a really open mind about, uh, you know, anyone that's sending them music. So, so I certainly think that, you know, their their, their standard is, is very high, of course. But, you know, if you think you're at that level, then uh, you should definitely apply. One thing I do mention quite a bit uh, in some of my other videos and in the Academy as well is that I, is that I think it's worth having, um, you know, some profile showing that, you know, you have some experience. I think a lot of these libraries uh, value that. So whether that, you know, that's a website or like, you know, it's a SoundCloud or Spotify profile or something like that. Or maybe it's a catalog of music on, uh, on another uh, library that you can send them to. Some kind of presence online, I think uh, it does add a lot of value to an application. Anyway, that's it for today. I uh, hope you guys are all doing well, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.